Hey everybody, this is Mike Anderson with Collision Advice. I'm here with my great friend Danny with the DEG, and we're working with SERS to bring you a series of quick tips that will help you to boost your business. Today's tip is about seat belts. Now, first of all, if none of you have taken advantage of the resource that's on the DEG website in regards to the owner's manuals, where you can download those and view what the owner's manuals say about seatbelt inspections, that's a mistake. You need to do that. But more importantly is, let me share something with you that I learned from some of the OEMs about their OEM repair procedures. You see, when you go into some of the OEM repair procedures, you will see two sections in regards to seatbelts. One is precautions and one is inspections. I'd love to ask you, do you know what the difference is? Well, let me share with you. When you see precautions, that tells you things that you need to do with that seatbelt if the vehicle was in an accident or a collision. So if it says precautions, it's saying these are things you need to do if the vehicle was in an accident. Like you may have to pre-scan it to see if the pretensioner has collapsed. Now the inspection portion of the OEM repair procedures, that is how you inspect the seatbelt if for some reason you had to remove it and you reinstall it or you remove it and replace it. It's how you inspect it to make sure it's installed and functioning properly. So in the OEM repair procedures, you have precautions, which is things you need to look at if the vehicle is in a collision, you have inspections, right? So let's say in a vehicle, for example, you had a vehicle that was hit in the quarter panel area. Well, I may have a precautions, things I need to inspect because it was in an accident, but I also may have to remove the seatbelt in order to replace the quarter panel, and so therefore I may have to inspect it when I reinstall it. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, most seatbelt pretensioners, if they're collapsed, will be single or one-time use parts, and other parts as well. Now again, when it talks about the labor to inspect seat belts or these precautions, one of the questions we often get is, is it included? So Danny, what are your thoughts? So after a collision, if an inspection is required for SRS systems or safety components uh, systems, the labor to perform that inspection or to verify anything like that is not included. So any additional diagnostics or research associated with that inspection is not included as well. If you go on the DEG's website, we have the links to the owner's manuals, which will always tell the consumer, the vehicle owner, to have the vehicle inspected and repaired by an authorized repair facility or by the manufacturer recommended collision center. So yes, it is a not included operation and it's important to always use the uh, collision center that's authorized and recommended by the vehicle manufacturer. Great insights, Danny, thanks for sharing. One other thing, ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind when it comes to seat belts, sometimes they might also require specific test drives. I know, for example, I was looking at a European vehicle and they required that I test drive the vehicle at six different speeds with six different braking conditions just to verify the functionality of the seat belts. So ladies and gentlemen, no matter whether you charge for it or not, we have uh, an obligation to make sure that we're fixing vehicles safely and properly, and that means following the own repair procedures when it comes to seat belts. Thanks for joining us today.